Hey everybody, welcome back to Deerfield Beach. Last time you saw me in this exact same spot, this was the situation. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is absolutely pouring. Holy moly. That is amazing. Look at that. You'll be able to see it when this car backs up and it's light too. That is what a tropical downpour looks like. So much fun. So much fun. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to Deerfield Beach. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I'm on my GoPro this morning because I'm doing some seascape photography. Uh, kind of a follow-up to the video that kind of failed a few weeks ago. I uh, wanted to give you some tips on how to capture the best seascape images. Uh, we are having an absolutely glorious sunrise happening behind us. We're about 45 minutes away from sunrise and high clouds there that's already starting to light up. So uh, it's looking pretty amazing. I usually prefer dark and stormy, but uh, I guess uh, a little bit of color every now and then is pretty good too. So yeah, I just wanted to give you some uh, tips. I don't really have a certain set amount of tips, uh, but as we go along, I'm just gonna tell you whatever I can think of that uh, has enabled me to capture some good seascape, seascape images over the years. So uh, yeah, wow, look at the sunrise. This is looking amazing. And these aren't going to be straight photography tips. These are going to be tips that I've learned just over years of doing seascapes. So the first most important thing I consider when I'm going to the beach is what I'm going to wear. Do I plan on getting in the water or do I plan on shooting farther back? Well, today, you can see I'm pretty much in the water. You know, I'm not going to be waist deep. Uh, we're at, going towards low tide right now. So this water should keep moving a little farther out. But yeah, I, I do plan on getting wet. So I just wore shorts and a t-shirt uh, I left my shoes in the car but you know that attire may not work if you're shooting seascapes at, you know in the North Sea or something so yeah just consider what you're wearing um, if you wear jeans and a t-shirt uh, in tennis shoes probably not gonna want to get down in the water but yeah um, it, this is Florida so it's nice and warm the water is about 89 or 90 degrees right now uh, it's like bath water really sunrise wow this guy is on fire this morning wow i guess a little color every now and then is a good thing so wow that's amazing all right tip number two always have a lot of lens cloths on you i have a stiff 15 mile an hour wind straight out of the east so i'm probably getting some sea spray that's coating my my lens right now and after a while you kind of don't notice it you get home and your photos are kind of hazy looking it's hard to get rid of that so you know maybe every three or four shots just give your lens a quick wipe down. Wow, that's amazing. We just had the most amazing sunset for about three or four minutes. That sky just absolutely exploded. And then as fast as it came on, it's gone, uh, which is cool. There's a lot of great texture in those clouds. Still a little bit of color and now some mood, so perfect. Uh, next tip is be careful where you leave your camera bag or anything you bring with you. And I speak from personal experience on this. I found my camera bag floating once, my GoPro floating, my tripod floating. Uh, so yeah, just I'm going to wear mine today because we still have some of the surf coming in. You know, but you know, maybe something like up on those rocks back there. Uh, we're headed towards low tide right now, so it's not going to get it back there. But I would not leave it from experience anywhere behind me on the beach there. Just. Uh, Last thing you want to do is find your camera bag floating. So my next tip would be to never ever completely turn your back to the ocean. Uh, I'm kind of facing to the side right now, so I kind of always have an eye on what's coming. Like I said, we're headed towards low tide, so I'm not really worried about it. 
We have about three or four foot waves, uh, but they're kind of breaking out there and rolling in. So I'm not really concerned about rogue waves, but you know, I've lived in places like Hawaii and California where the surf is a lot more powerful than what we have here in Florida in the Atlantic. And uh, yeah, it, it could be bad news if you get hit by one of those rogue waves. And also, don't turn your back on the ocean and don't completely take your eye off of your camera if you're doing something like vlogging. Uh, same thing, you might get hit by the rogue wave and find, find your camera floating off into the ocean. All right, so the next tip is really dig your tripod into the sand. Uh, for a couple different reasons. Obviously, if you get a big wave, you don't want to have your camera topple over into the water. Um, also check your the level on your camera a lot. Even if you have your tripod really dug in there, you know, the water coming in and out, in and out, is gonna really soft, you know, loosen the sand and, and cause it to shift. Um, it's not really a big deal. You can fix it later in post-processing. It'll just save you a lot of time if you continually check the level on your camera. So my next tip would be to take your camera out of single shot mode and put it onto the continuous uh, shooting mode one right after another. That way when you got a wave coming in, let's say this rock is my foreground in, I want to capture that wave as it hits the front of the rock, maybe the middle, maybe uh, on the back side of the rock, and then once it's completely past the rock, it kind of quadruples my chance of capturing the motion that I'm looking for. If I try to capture it in single shot mode, I might get lucky every once in a while, but this kind of, like I said, quadruples your chance of getting the motion that you're looking for. So I think I just captured the image of the day. I had a nice wave coming in, put my finger on the shutter button, just held it down, bam, 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 captured like six or seven shots that wave came over the rocks. Four or five of them were terrible, uh, but two of them looked amazing. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, I'll put those up on the screen for you here at the end of the video. But yeah, I definitely would not have been able to capture that had I been in single shot mode. So I think my next tip would be just kind of think about your composition. So earlier I was on this, this side of the rock, kind of shooting more parallel to the shoreline. But now the sun's risen, I'm kind of shooting a little bit more out towards the ocean now, but I still have a different angle on these rocks. Um, but the problem is you can get so obsessed with capturing that perfect motion in the waves that you get home and you get all these great shots, but you only have one composition. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get at least two or three different compositions this morning to show you. So. Yeah, don't get too obsessed with always trying to capture the perfect motion. You know, once you think you got it, kind of move on to your next composition. And I think that can apply to any type of landscape or seascape photography. You can get obsessed with taking the same photo over and over and over again. So I think my last tip is to don't get too caught up in reviewing uh, the images on the back of the screen as they happen. Because you're, you just have wave after wave after wave coming in. If you're sitting here looking at your images thinking, hey, I got a great one, I got a great one miss that next wave that comes in that could have been the actual great one so yeah don't get too caught up in reviewing your images on the back of the screen just fire them off wait till you get home to check them out all right so i think my last tip is make sure you don't retract your very bottom tripod legs or any of the tripod legs that have sand on them until you can get to a shower and wash it off and if you're at like the, some kind of remote beach and don't have showers at the very least wash it off in the ocean water and then wipe them down really good until you can get to a place where you can wash it with um, I'm not very handy, so if I get sand stuck up in there, um, I can get the tripod apart, but I can never get it back together, so I have to find somebody who will put it back together for me or go buy it. So, yeah, just uh, don't retract any of the tripod legs that you have gotten sand. Top tip there. Alright guys, I think that's it for today. I didn't even touch ISO, shutter speed, focal length. We'll save that for another video. I just kind of wanted to give you some, some maybe non-conventional seascape photography tips. I'm out of shape, jeez. Hope it seemed kind of chaotic though, because that was kind of my plan. Because when you're shooting seascapes, it is kind of chaotic. So I hope you felt like you were right there with me. And uh, just wanted to give you some non-traditional seascape tips. Uh, just stuff that I've learned over the years that will help you come away with a better seascape experience.
All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in this week. If this is your first time seeing my channel, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And if you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would definitely love to have you along for the landscape or seascape photography adventures. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in as always. Hope everybody's doing well out there, keeping safe, and we'll see you again next Monday. All right, guys, bye.